I, I don't know if you recall, you know, before the, the invasion in Afghanistan, um, there's a famous scene in Kandahar of the Taliban hanging a whole bunch of what they called agents. Um, and it's in a soccer stadium. And this is, this was, you know, it was, this is, this was broadcast worldwide. One of the really amazing things was uh, as I got there, we actually found the widow and one of them was an agent of ours, someone who worked for the agency. Um, we found the widow and I kind of made it my priority to, to give her what, you know, kind of the, the, the death benefit, the payments that we will give, you know, when an agent is killed in the line of duty, um, a foreigner, you know, we will always take care of the family. That's just something that, that the agency does. And that's, you know, it's one of the, again, we talked about the relationships before yeah. between the agent and, and the case officer or, or just, or the organization. Um, so I tracked her down and, and this wasn't a kind of a sexy operation. It wasn't written about anywhere, but I got some money that the agent was, was owed, owed. And, and I went into some dingy little, you know, you know, mud hut mm-hmm. in, uh, in Kandahar city. Um, I couldn't talk to the, the wife directly because it was, you know, Afghanistan, such a traditional culture. And so, you know, it's, it's, it literally is like, like a, like a curtain hang between us. And she of course is, is fully covered. Um, and I made some kind of silly speech, which I thought was kind of, you know, very, very relevant, um, about his sacrifice because it, it was all over, you know, every, every media outlet in the entire planet that this person had been executed. Um, and we gave the, we gave the payment and that was something that was really important. Now. You know how this ends who knows did she ever ever get this she probably had a whole bunch of male relatives who stole the money but it was just you know it was, it was night after night of just doing these things um and i just having you know feeling um that you know what a what an opportunity this was that i was honored to be able to do um this kind of stuff and again different time of afghanistan I mean, this was this was only months after 9 11. we were yeah. eager to kind of track down track down uh uh you know those those responsible so where, yeah. where were you had you gone overseas prior? I know you earlier. You yeah. said you were in New York. But yep. Had so you gone overseas that, prior? I had done. I, I got to be careful saying this. I had my my you know my wife was in the business as well. She was on her first tour in a in a country in the Levant in in, in the Middle East, and I went to learn Arabic. Okay. So I, I I actually you know took that time. It's you know we do one of the things the agency does really well is these tandem assignments. So um, you know if if, if you know the uh, two officers are married, they'll try to get people both jobs, and so. She had a great job there, and I would, and I needed to learn, you know, uh, uh, Arabic. So I did my time there. The reason um, I'm asking yeah. is, is uh, you know, when I when I worked there and I assisted you guys with a lot of operations, right. I always it was always kind of talk around uh, the outfit that I was in is you guys are coming from working in permissive environments, right. then you show yep. up to uh, just a straight war zone, yeah. Kandahar and O2, right. you know, and 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 your guys' adaptability is phenomenal, but a lot of times you show up and 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 you'll be like, well, you you might not want to go out there, you right. know, by yourself, yeah. and you might want to carry a little extra yeah. stuff. And no, and, you're right. And um, yeah. but I was just wondering, what is that? Because that's just a completely different world sure. to go from, uh, you know, just what, what, Moscow Sean, oh, to right. to. Right. Kandahar, Afghanistan. There are those who can do to make that transition, and those who can't. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget when I left there. So I, 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 I followed a case officer who had been in special forces, and he was certainly more, um, uh, you know, had, had, you know, in terms of you know his uh, uh, his background was was more conducive to being where he was. But then I showed up and I spoke Arabic, and I was comfortable in that environment. So I, I offered, he, he, you know, he had some things that he offered, then I had some things that I offered. I remember when I left, I, 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 the, the officer coming in was not, shouldn't have been there. And sometimes you see that, but, um, you know, but, but what's interesting, why this matters is the management in the base or the station. And so, um, it, you know, uh, so for example, if I, you know, if, if, if when I was, cause I did both, I, I ran stations in, in permissive environments and I ran, you know, a, a base in a paramilitary uh, uh, environment. It was in Eastern Afghanistan. We got rocketed every day for the entire year. It was insane. Um, so someone who didn't have military experience or hadn't been in that kind of environment before, I would say, okay, here you are, and you're going to go do your agent meetings. You're going to have your security personnel like yourself, Sean. Um, ordinarily we tell case officers, you make all the decisions when it comes to, to, to that op and safety, you're going to listen to someone else today. You know, so if we got, if we got, you know, shooters with us, you know, they're going to be the ones, um, just, just rely on them. At the same time, sometimes I would get officers who came from a war zone, had a spectacular career to a permissive environment, and they're like, hey, man, I did a tour. And I'm like, well, sort of. Because what you did do is you served your country for a year in a really shitty place and risked your life. 
But you know what? You never ran a surveillance detection route because, Sean, you guys ran it for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, it, and, and so you got to be able to adapt. And, and, you know, the case officer has to have some humility. One of the things, I worked really well with your old outfit um, uh, because, number one, um, I, I respected with, you know, what you all brought to the table in a tremendous fashion. But it was also, you know, I was, I was like, okay, if, you know, if, if the hair starts, you know, going up in the back of your neck, um, get us out of this. I'm not going to question that. I might have an agent meeting. This agent might have information we desperately need. But if Sean, if you come to me and said, Mark, we got to get out of here, we're getting out of here. Um, and you, you know, you just kind of have that, that kind of back and forth, um, with your security folks. And, um, to me, that was always, always, cause I mean, you got to have some humility. I don't know certain things, uh, parts of, of, uh, 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 you know, what are required on the security side. And perhaps you all don't know what's, what's, you know, required for the agent handling as much, but you kind of have that kind of mind meld together and it can work. It doesn't always, there's some t- tension sometimes. Yeah. Um, and, and I would have to talk sometimes to the security personnel or to, um, our, our case officers saying, just, you know, get your shit together. We all got to work together. But, um, at the end of the day, uh, you know, when you, when you run operations, um, there's a fallback, which means if you got to get off the X, get off the X. Yeah. And cause you know, there's no, you can't, you can't, you know, bullets, if a bullets going to come at you and can't turn that around. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Um, uh, and, and I think after, after some terrible instance, instances in, in the war zones where we lost people, I think people got smarter. Yeah. How many deployments did you do in, in war zones? So I did, uh, I gotta be careful on saying this. So it was, it was, you know, uh, probably almost three years altogether, um, off and on it was, but it was a solid year. 2011, 2012, I was chief in Eastern Afghanistan in Patika, Patika province. Um, uh, and then before that it was my time in Afghanistan, then half a year in Iraq and then some other places I can't always <laughs> talk about, it. Uh, but it. it was, it was, it was enough where I became really comfortable in that environment. Um, for, and it's important for a couple of reasons. You know, I, I, I was, I'm not former military. Um, so I was very cognizant of that. And, and so, you know, if I was a base chief, um, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a paramilitary base, I would have a, um, someone from our special activities center, um, as a kind of the chief paramilitary advisor. And I would have, you know, some security folks from, from your old outfit there as well, and maybe some other, other, other folks too. And so, man, it's a team effort. And so, you know, if, if we're taking incoming rocket fire um, and we have the ability uh, and, and the authority to return fire, I'm going to rely on people who know how to do that. So, you know, I might give the final OK or I might just say, don't even ask me. You know, we have the point of origin site. We're getting shot at by Al Qaeda across the border in Pakistan. Return fire with our mortars. Um, that's I'm good with that. Um, and you kind of that's it. But you so you know what you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, and so it was, but I, I became really comfortable in those environments and that's what I was kind of known for. And I think that, um, uh, not everyone can do that. Uh, uh, but it's just a, it's a place where I, where I thrive because I also brought that kind of the, the operational side of things. So again, I was a good recruiter. I mean, I, and I, and I was also singularly focused. I think that, um, I remember when I got to Afghanistan, even much later on 2011 or 2012 and for, for a variety of reasons, um, you know, I really was super aggressive. Um, this is coming off a of kind of the terrible tragedy what happened in a, one of our sister bases in, in coast in, uh, in uh, December 30th, 2009. So a lot of us wanted a lot of, you know, vengeance is the wrong word. We're not really supposed to, mm-hmm. um, you know, taking vengeance out on our enemies. It's a very kind of calculated process and how we go after high value targets. I mean, it's got to be based on kind of continuing ongoing threats to U.S. personnel. But the idea of, of killing, you know, killing Al Qaeda um, uh, uh, members or, or collecting intelligence to do so. And I'll, I'll tell, you know, the proudest story I had in, in a war zone was from my time, um, uh, in 2011, you know, I got to the base. Um, I'll never forget flying in. It was, a, uh, I was replacing a great friend of mine, ironically, who I'd been up in Northern Iraq with, uh, in 2002, his name is Mick Mulroy. He's out now and he talks, he's a former, uh, ground branch officer, um, in special activities, uh, uh, center. Then he went on to be a station chief, uh, in Africa, super, super great friend of mine. Again, and we had spent, you know, months together in Iraq, and I'm flying into to Afghanistan. And if you recall, you know, our, our kind of helo infills are always at night. And we're flying in, and th- this base took incoming, you know, 107 millimeter rocket fire, you know, constantly. And so we're hovering until kind of the IDF finished, and we go down there, and, you know, security folks, um, someone pick me up, and we can get to a kind of a, the, the, the hardened shelter, the, the base. And I'm, I'm, bu- I'm there for a year. This is my base. And I'm like, what the fuck have I got myself into? <laughs> which, which is, which is, it's the right, it's the right attitude. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and Mick's there with a big smile on his face. He's like, Hey man, welcome. 
Um, and he couldn't wait to get out of there too. So we do a quick turnover and he's on the bird <laughs> and he's gone. Um, but one of the things about that particular location is a couple years earlier, um, two CI officers uh, had been killed um, from our special activities uh, 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 center and, uh, and we knew who did it. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of things you can do, you know, so we're there trying to win hearts and minds. We have all of our kind of humanitarian projects and we also have our, the HVT mission. And I gathered everyone in the base and I said, if we do anything in this next year, we're going to get, we're going to kill the dude um, who's responsible for the death of two of our colleagues. And we did. You did. Yep. And the night where a uh, Hellfire missile, you know, ended the life of a really bad guy because it's not only responsible for killing uh, two of our officers, but he was plotting additional attacks and was responsible for additional attacks against American forces. And that's really important too. But, um, you know, that night sitting around the fire pit, which is, as you remember, it's, you know, it's caveman TV. Mm -hmm. um, the single greatest uh, uh, moments I've had uh, in war zones or places like that, you know, the camaraderie, the person, if you, if you ask me, what do I miss about CIA? It's not the bureaucracy. There's a whole bunch of bad shit that happened to me in the end, but it's that camaraderie around the fire pit in a war zone. Um, but, uh, one of the, uh, um, uh, one of the guys with me there, um, was like, Hey man, I, I have the, I have the phone number back in Fort Bragg of the widow of one of these officers. We should call her. That's fucking unheard of. Wow. And I said, fuck it. Get the sat phone. And we called her and we said, we, we avenged the death, uh, uh, of your husband. And she just said, thank you. Holy shit. Um, That's no cable. Amazing. You know, yeah. I, I just, and, and that to me, we sat around, had a toast of bourbon and, uh, and that was, that was relatively early on in my year, but I was like, that was good, man. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.